I get to play cowgirl today, I'm trying to get used to playing and singing again. So if I drop my pick a couple times, you'll know why. <laughs> God, you're so good. You're so faithful. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, we look to you, Lord. There is none like you, none like you. to you this morning we look to you this day you give us all that we need I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah
do that right now, just wherever you are, we thank you, Jesus. Just begin to thank him. God, you're so good. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence. There's none like you, God. God, thank you for your name that you give us walk in your authority today, Jesus, through the power of your name. Thank you, Jesus. Lost are saved, find their way, have the sound your great name, all condemned, feel no shame, have the sound of your great name, every fear has no place, have the sound of your great name, the enemy, yeah, he has to leave at the sound of your great name, Jesus, worthy is the my 
Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Oh, he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Yes, he loves you. He loves you.
That was great. I loved it. I love you playing guitar too, Holly. <laughs> hey, um, that was anointed. Good harmony, David. <laughs> yes, very yes. good. Thank you, David. <laughs> I like you playing guitar too. <laughs> 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 um, <clears throat> that song is just really ministering these days I because so the thing is, is the times are not so good. But God is good, and we can lean on him and trust him no matter what's going on, even though our feelings may be screaming exactly opposite of what the word says. The word is true, and it's powerful, and it's mighty, and it changes circumstances. And oh, by the way, Megan grew a beard. <laughs> <laughs> it can happen. No, <clears throat> we miss Megan, but we uh, we got a we got a fun person to sit in here, Pastor Jeff. So, thank you for that. That's we didn't know he just came over and sat down. So, <laughs> <laughs> no. did I invite myself? <laughs> no, we invited him, but we didn't know if he'd be here. But he did <laughs> come, <laughs> so it's fun. So you're talking about the word and yeah. Life and death is actually in the power of the tongue. Boy, that's and truth. you're you're starting right off with how we can actually steer our emotions, rule our our mood by by our words. Yeah. So uh, I by, think by a lot of things actually, but the the words of our mouth is like the, um, it, it, it's the thing that steers our life, but. There's well, I, other, I, we're talking about some other things along with that that can help turn the tide of a situation. But actually the word that we speak out of our mouths becomes the, uh, it's like the bridle. It talks about in the Bible as the bridle on the horse, which means it's going to steer the direction the horse goes. Yeah. And, and so the, that's what happens with our lives. It, we don't want to get our tongues in control because... When we're having negative feelings, the last thing we want to do is talk right. But it's the thing that we that will help us come out of the bad feelings. And we get tempted to murmur, don't we? Mm -hmm. or, or, or reinforce or underscore or upset. Yeah. And that's why I think when David prayed in Psalm 19, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Right. Oh, Lord, my, my rock and my redeemer. Yeah. And I think about... But the Lord's brother James said that the tongue is a fire. Though it's a small part of the body, it boasts of great things. And mm -hmm. that uh, it's, he likens it to the rudder of a ship. The ship is huge. Like, this, like say, this table was a, a boat. The rudder would just be a very small part of it. But yeah. it actually steers the direction of the whole boat. Uh -huh. And so the writer there is saying that's how powerful the tongue is, and then in Proverbs it says life and death are actually in the power of the tongue. Yes. So I think about Ephesians where he warns us, be angry 
but yet do not sin. Some yeah, things bug us. You may get angry. We do have emotions. Yes. We do have bad experiences that occasionally hit us or frustrations, things that we're not happy about, things that don't reconcile. But right. he says, do not sin. Right. And, it, and the way he ties it in, he says, do not let the sun go down on your anger. Do not give the devil an opportunity. It talks about don't steal anymore, but work with your hands. And then it says in verse 29, Amazingly, this comes in this context of these important steps. Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth. Now, we think about swear words. And Patsy and Addison, you know I grew up 30. I grew up closer to the Mexican border in San Diego than we are to the Arch of St. Louis and the Mississippi River. Yeah. So I used to go back and forth and get haircuts. And I lived in that uh, Baja, California, and Mexican culture. And in high school, unfortunately, I did learn some Spanish, but <laughs> they weren't wholesome words. <laughs> and I, honestly, I never knew what they meant. I just heard the street talk, you know, on the playground, and I picked up, you know, eight or ten words. Yeah. And uh, That's I knew what to, little kids will do if people are not using. Oh the right yeah, words there are them. YouTube's about it. You know, you, yeah, where they learn that? Okay, you know, from an unbridled well, yeah, tongue of an adult. Yeah. It's on everything. But exactly. that we, we, and I'm saying we, of course, know uh, those inappropriate words are unwholesome words. Um, it, it, but and it's funny too because I would say these. Uh, there was a missionary that it was second language was Spanish. He was American, but he. And I, I said, yeah, I learned some Spanish. And he said, what, you, what words? And I started to say them. And he said, oh, I feel like I need to repent. And I said, well, I don't know what they mean, but I just heard them growing up. And he goes, you don't even want to know what they mean, but they're bad. And he said, I feel like I need to take a shower, you know. Oh, and, and, and that's those are those unwholesome cuss words. But it's right. even more deeply rooted than that. It's it's unwholesome. It's it's unbelief is is as bad as cussing it is um doubt and fear re, re, you know murmuring and complaining well you know, look at the children of israel you know they got held in place for 40 years from the murmur, murmuring so it was all complaining it says do not That's grieve why. the holy spirit and he said don't let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth but only such a word as is good to edification uh According to the need of the moment, I think every moment somebody needs a word of encouragement. Every moment somebody needs a word of scripture. Every moment somebody needs a word of exhortation I mean, or you admonishment. Need, you need it yourself. Oh, you all need the to time. Hear it out of your own mouth. And, if, and, and who better to have assurance come to us but us speaking God's word out of our own heart? Right. And He says, "Do not grieve, well, so that it'll give grace to the hearer." We we need grace. You know, we need that mercy in our hearing. Amen. A faith comes by hearing. Apparently, grace comes by hearing. We know that in Numbers 13, when the bad report spies came back with a bunch of negativity, the hearts of the people melted with fear because they brought back unwholesome words. Like, oh, the giants are there. The, the cities are fortified. The, the people are, over, are sophisticated. It, we, it, and they, they just basically got in a can't-do attitude. So this is a hinge point today. <laughs> As I've invaded the ladies' meeting, <laughs> and I uh, just wanted to comment on a couple of thoughts. No, it's awesome. We just need to bridle so, our no, time. We're so fun. really, what we're talking about today is guarding your heart, and and the thing is, this is the way you guard your heart. And it's so funny how when you talk about guarding your heart, people think you're talking about you're a single person and you have to watch how you feel about certain people and you have to guard it so you don't give your heart to the wrong person well obviously that can apply there but really that's not the what it, the essence of it. it it's about the issues of life flow out of our heart and when your heart gets hurt it hurts just like a physical hurt but the heart is an emotional hurt and a spiritual hurt and so we, God told us to guard that because the devil is after it. If he can get our heart, he can get our whole body. And the thing is, what happens when heartache comes in or discouragement, which it's taking away your courage. And I, do you remember the Wizard of Oz? Remember the lion? It all had to do with heart and courage it all his courage had to do with him being bold 
And, and if your courage gets removed, you become extremely timid, you know. And um, courage comes out of the heart. And like he started with, which is definitely one of the most important elements of it, is what comes out of our mouths. But before it comes out of our mouths, we have to guard our hearts. And it's an interesting thing. Pro Proverbs 13, well, let's, Proverbs 4.23 talks yeah, above about. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Everything you do flows from it. Now, that's one translation. The other says from it flow the springs of life. But it's interesting. I like that translation that Addison just gave. Because everything you do flows from the heart. And that's, that's truth. That's and truth. out of that which fills the heart, the mouth, the mouth speaks. Boy, that's, that's why when David said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Right. He knew they operated in tandem. And so uh -huh. what goes in will come out. Right. We think about modern computers. What you program on your hard drive, that software goes in there and it imprints and... and uh, it, it develops your pattern. Exactly. And I think about Philippians 2.14. He says, uh, do all things without grumbling or disputing. Mm. So That's here is interesting. Here's an exhortation. Get for, up, get ready for school. Get, get up, get ready for work without grumbling or disputing. Just <laughs> apply that in the morning. Or, <laughs> or, 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 or yeah, or conversations. <laughs> we have to beware yeah. Of conversations quickly escalating into right. confrontation or, or or aggression or defensiveness. You know, we've got to learn. Defensiveness is a big one. And I, I just think that yeah. if we if we really trust the Lord for this, <laughs> life and death is in the power of the tongue. Hi, huh, Addison. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah. She said, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I was going to say the scripture right before Philippians 2.14 is 2.13. And I really like this one. God will continually revitalize you and planting within you the passion to do what pleases him. Well, let's, so read, help the, us. let's read this That's translation, good. Addison. Read this one. Okay, but I really liked this translation. No, I like, I like this one, <laughs> I like too. That one. Well, let's I know. For let's it is God them. who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. So okay. sometimes I'll have Trent, I'll say, um, let's put on the armor of God. He says, I don't want to. And so, <laughs> which is funny. But it's, that's just human nature. It's funny now at nature. three, you're going to have to develop some stuff I know, that's as why, it becomes no, a teenager. Now it's funny. That's not why, a, not in the teenage trust years. me, we're disciplining him. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but that's the human nature to just, you know, be like, uh, but when we feed the spirit for it is God who's at work in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. So as we um, keep sowing that in, I mean, he, he will do it. He's just testing the limits well, right no, now. No, that's a great example too, because we feel that way a lot. Yeah. Like God wants us to do certain things and we just don't feel like I'll it. I'll tell him, I said, Trent, you got to have a good attitude. And he'll say, I don't want to have a good attitude. <laughs> And I'm like, I know, nobody wants to, but you have to. A three-year-old is very well, honest. And you're, we're, talk, we're talking about three generations, our grandson, our daughter, and us as, as maturing Christians. And it, it models mm -hmm. with us. And yeah. so the life and death is in the power of the tongue. And we're admonished here to really be aware of this mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, um, let things, you know, project a, an, a more excellent way. Like the love walk is, is it helps us to bridle our tongue and it helps yeah. us to consider that our words have power. Yeah. And that, Pastor Patsy, you started us in this direction of, of conquering our emotions and our moodiness. Right. And, and Addison brought an excellent verse, second, Philipp, uh, second chapter of Philippians, verse 13. Yeah. And uh, God's at I work have in to us. Lean on that all the time. I love it, and I love it so much. I looked it up. Like God, the, you're going to have to help me with this. In the Weymouth you translation, the do, you give me the will to do this. And you're surrounded by a herd of cats, like your husband and your kids and everything. <laughs> this is so true. you have that's like your, every mom. That's your yeah. That's your cross to bear. But uh, <laughs> but but, but <laughs> Weymouth says it this way: For it is God Himself whose power creates within you both the power. The desire well, and the I willingness to I execute his gracious will. The desire, for it is God himself whose power creates within you both the, the desire, desire and the power to execute his gracious will. So here God wow. is prompting us in this direction, and he's not going, mm -hmm. you better do this. No. He's saying, 
I'm calling you to this excellent way to mm-hmm. humble yourself, to bridle your tongue, mm-hmm. to get your words right, get your thought life on track, mm-hmm. meditate properly, mm-hmm. get your spiritual life Make in order, today. Get, and then to help you not to go berserk. And, and in yeah. case your hormones are uh, out, of, out of skew, man, this can help you get mm-hmm. lined up. And that I even heard somebody say a thought left unsaid will die unborn. Right. So a lot of times the things that come to us, we really shouldn't say. <laughs> and we should say, well, what does the word say about that? Yeah. And in fact, I think about in, in the book of Hebrews, it talks about we should consider Jesus, who is the apostle and high priest of our confession. And that we have a high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, uh, we're to hold fast to our confession. Yeah, that what he's referring that we yield to him as our high priest of our confession. We don't have to. So that's the thing as far as we have to remind ourselves that Jesus will help us make our confession right. And I think that's also talking about the confession of Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And it does, first it, and foremost. Right, so it's reminding us that, hey, you're not feeling like doing this right now, but get yourself back on the track of what's right before the Lord. And the good news is because... And we can do it. That's the good thing. Well, because we he's the it. apostle and high priest of our confession, so we can uh, comply with him and bridle our tongue along the lines of what he wants us to do in conversation, at work. Because you can't unhear some things once they get out. Once well, the cat's out of the bag. So that's why we ought not communicate unbelief or a bunch of bitterness or, you know, blurting uh, angry things. I, I mean... Or unbelief. Oh, particularly. But unbelief comes out of the heart. That's the thing is, and this is where it comes from. Addison's going to read a scripture, and this is really what we're targeting. Is Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but yeah. a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. So hope deferred makes the heart sick. So we're talking about heart sickness today, whether you realize it or not. And we're talking about how to get out of it. So if you've been out there for a long period of time and you've been believing God for things, and it just seems like it's lingering and lingering and lingering. And as you can tell by the way I'm saying this, I've had this happen to me. And I think every believer has had this happen to them that they've been longing for things, believing for things, and, and, it, and it hasn't happened for a long period of time. Who knows why? I mean, sometimes it's being held back by the devil. Sometimes it's being held back by circumstances. Sometimes it's being held back by a lack of obedience. Sometimes it's being held back because other people are not obeying God. So there's a lot of reasons involved. It's not because you've prayed and God hasn't answered your prayer. There are circumstances involved with answered prayer. You know, God is not a wizard. God is God. And and when you pray, God begins to line up a lot of situations and a lot of people. And, you know, you may have prayed for something and the Lord may have spoken to someone to do it. And they may have completely disobeyed God. But, you know, and not and not followed through with it. But the thing is, that doesn't mean God didn't answer your prayer. He'll go to somebody else. And he'll go to somebody else. And he'll go to somebody else. The thing is, or he'll set up the circumstances to fulfill that heart's desire. But what's wonderful about that scripture in Proverbs 4, 23, do you have anything to say about that, Allison? Is that a, a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. So what we're saying to you today is get back on your desire. Get back on your faith stand. Get back in the middle of it. And like Pastor Jeff's talking about with your words, that's definitely one way to do it. And we're going to talk about some other ways to do it too. What, what are you going to Well, a second ago I had um, the scripture, Matthew 5, 43, about helping us see people how God sees them, and in in this gospel, it teaches us to love and accept our enemies. Do not hold any hatred. Pray for the people who hurt you, for he knows the right thing to do. Treat people the way you want to be treated, whether it's an ally or an enemy. Your kindness will be rewarded, for you are doing what the Father desires. Right. And I was thinking about um, a a friend who they uh, 
we've had a lot of house testimonies. And as oh, I've shared ha house it. testimonies, more people have said, that encouraged me and this just happened for our house and I've been hearing that. But it. the house stuff goes along with every area of your life. If it's, you need a new job, if you need um, healing in your family. Yes, he's doing it. The, it's the same in all the areas. Healing in your body. Healing in your emotions. <laughs> yes. Amen. And so, um, but, you know, about guarding your heart and all these things, it, it, this goes along with um, a friend. They were wanting to buy some land. And I've talked about this before. Land next to family members. The person who sold it was selling it heard about this, so they were upping the price. Well, and they... they the real estate agent actually turned a little wicked because when they found out that people wanted that land. He price gouged. He price gouged. Yeah, and so um, they, but they, I instantly had in my heart for them, don't worry about the money, it will come through. If you have to pay more than you want to, God will cover that amount. And keep going for it. You yeah, and keep, and keep yeah. Um, taking steps. So and they, what happened? They did a counter offer and then they put it on pause, which nowadays with uh, real estate, it's going very quickly. There's not much time in between sales. Like if anybody's going to buy a house right now, you have to go like immediately if you want it. <laughs> like it's just crazy right now. So mm. they waited a few days and then um, the guy accepted their offer. And then they also put their house on the market and it sold within like the day. And they got the amount over. It covered the exact amount that they wanted yeah. or needed because of the gouging of the room. Yeah. Now we can pray blessing on the guy that opportunistically manipulated more. I, I'm not even thinking or talking about him. He, who cares? Yes, I well, agree. Well, no, because I you agree. just said we should pray I know. for those I who have brought it up. I should have brought it up so you no, don't this have to is deal help. with it. No, I mean, it, you're right not to get a bitter bad attitude, but, yeah, but what you do, do is love your enemies and pray for those who mistreat you. That's it's what, true. It's true. So we pray it's for intense. That real estate agent first of all I mean, that they get saved. Some people think it's good business, but uh, that was just opportunistic manipulation. Yeah. And then you get yeah. you can go for months upset about it, but actually, yeah, God's God gave the sister here a word to encourage this couple, and God offset the dilemma and provided for it. Extra. And God, you know, that that guy could, or that lady could deal with her own attitude and, you know, yeah. pray that God will get a hold of her, hallelujah, or him. <laughs> yes. That's why you pray for them. Yes, They've got a little bit right. of coal on their heads. You know? exactly and right. they could go their whole lives rethinking about this over and over and over again, or they can, which they just seem like they're over it, and who cares, because yeah. God already worked God it out. God supplied it. So if you have felt like you've been ripped off in your life, like, just... Yeah. Forgive them so what on. I feel from this ladies meeting, from your words, you guys, is we, if we're going to loop, it's kind of like with what Holly, Holly and uh, David started us with worshiping God. We might as well enter in with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise, cast down imaginations, uh, cast our cares on him, not keep reiterating. I get stuck sometimes reiterating my frustrations. Oh, everybody does. And I want to let, like David, I think that's why in Psalm 19, he ended it with, God, please let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. And you guys so beautifully pointed to Proverbs 4.23 about the reason we're to guard our hearts is because that's where all the goodies come from, the yeah. power, the encouragement. Everything. I visited a lady who's about ready to cheat. She, she is 100 years old today. Today. And I've it's known her since day. the 1970s. <laughs> And I went to visit her because she's getting ready to die. And she's given her heart to Jesus. And she was in a nap. And then she woke up from her nap, a little disoriented, but she's sharp as a tack. She's got a great sound mind. Uh, she's exercised through her life, so she's, she's fit. But, man, she reached up to me. And before I could try to minister to her, I read Psalm 23 to her, and I prayed for her and thank God for her. She just starts pouring out love and pouring out. And, and both of you know that she has this tendency. Yeah. And that's why I'm so fascinated by the, po the prospect that let bitter, it says, let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth. There's always an opportunity at every fork in the road to yeah. murmur or rejoice. And it's going to make you feel bad. We've had to count it. our blessings yeah. instead of like we're starting to get tempted to be unhappy mm -hmm. with this or dissatisfied with that or with ourselves or with others or with our circumstances. But the Bible, biblically, uh, he wants us to push into uh, let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth. Ephesians 4.29, but only such a word as is good for edification according to the need of the moment. 
so that it will give grace to those who hear. So when I, this lady was talking to me, it gave grace to me. I went away encouraged. Yeah. I went away inspired. Yeah. She specified things she's observed in my life for decades. I mean, you and I baptized her. Mm-hmm. We talked to her about the Lord. She's come through some spiritual confusion and different things from the influences of life. And here she's landing on Jesus as the Lord and Savior, which is important on your 100th birthday. Yeah. yeah. But what I loved about it was here this lady has developed an understanding that you don't need to put out a bunch of toxicity and because life and death is in the power of the tongue. Yeah, it's yeah. powerful. And yeah. I w- we never got to um, give. And so I, w- I want to give you a chance, though, because I, this man came up to me during one of the services, and he said, um, I'm an engineer, so I'm not, like, in ministry, but I think of being an engineer as whenever I get to give off of my income yeah. for the week that it is my ministry to Absolutely. God. And so it's cool because he said my job it would you know it's and, and so he he thinks of his job as um ministering to it god is. and that is it what is. it is every single person and so yeah. um i want to give you a chance to give and uh if you feel like you've been ripped off or you feel like you don't know how you're going to make it and and all these things um find one scripture that will strengthen your heart and stand on that and don't try to memorize 20 scriptures about finances find one that really boosts your faith right and cuz that could change everything and this one i read today Deuteronomy 39 30 verse 9 the lord your god will make you abundantly prosperous in all the work of your hand and the fruit of your womb and in the fruit of your cattle and in the fruit of your ground for the lord will again take delight in prospering you he, he delights in us being uh, prosperous as he it. took delight in your fathers. When you obey the voice of the Lord, your God, to keep his commandments and his statutes that are written in this book of the law, when you turn to the Lord, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul. And yeah. that's what we've been talking about today. Yeah. So I just, as you give today, put it uh, towards your health and healing in your, in your body and in your uh, your household, and I, this was my scripture for yesterday. It was um, Third John 1, verse 2. Beloved friend, I pray that you are prospering in every way and that you continually enjoy good health just as your soul is prospering. So God wants us to be prospering uh, spirit, soul, and body yeah. and doesn't want you to hold on to any bitterness or grudges and to just... Um, we got to throw off those heavy things. And Trent, really, he said it. I don't feel like having a good attitude. And I said, I understand. So we're, we're, <laughs> so you have to, I was teaching yeah. him, well, this, you know, I was telling him about spirit, soul, and body. And we have to, <laughs> and I was explaining it They're to him. They're never too young. I mean, we should talk the word to our children. And we should, that's what the word says. So even we're when spirit, we don't feel like body. it, yeah. we just build up the spirit, man, so it can basically squash the other the other things going exactly. on. Exactly. <laughs> so we're talking about really several aspects of heart sickness today and how to overcome that. And so we're talking about disappointment, disillusionment, discouragement, depression. We're talking about um, feeling hurt by people, being tempted with bitterness toward people. So we're talking about overcoming all of those things because guess what? God wants your heart healthy, heart health. Pastor Jeff even taught on that on Sunday, how the Lord wants us in heart health. And, and it's interesting because we know this wonderful cardiologist, and she said, whatever's good for your heart is good for your brain. Whatever is good for your brain is good for your heart. So what does the Bible tell us? Renew our brain <laughs> with the word. So that's good for our heart. So you take the word and you meditate upon it in your mind, in, in, in your soulish realm, and it goes into your heart, and it brings heart health to you. So like Pastor Jeff talked about our mouths, and he also uh, talked about like uh, what makes the heart healthy, and, and um, God loves us so much, he understands us, and guess what, he's not mad at you, and that's another thing the devil uses on people. It's like um, like she was telling Trent, she loves Trent so much, he's three, 
and she understands him and she understands why he's saying he doesn't feel like having a good attitude. So she's not mad at him for that, just like God is not mad at you because you're having certain feelings. And it's interesting how the devil will try to condemn you and make you feel like you're just a bad Christian or you're just a bad person or you're just not doing it right. You know, he'll try to just make you feel less. But you're not less. The thing is, um, she begins the cure for Trent's uh, uh, turn in his attitude is the word. So he, she starts explaining it to him. Your spirit, your soul, your body, and you're dealing in these three areas. And this is why you feel this way. But you have to overcome it. And you, you have to have a good attitude anyway. And so all of these different elements that the devil tries to use to stop Christians from advancing, we need to just realize this is a normal type attack against you. And why does he want you to be discouraged? Because he, he wants to get you to make wrong decisions. He oh, wants you to do wrong things. And he, and he wants to lead and guide your life. So if he can get your heart dealt with, if the devil can get your heart with discouragement, with disillusionment, with depression, with, with uh, hurt toward others, if he can get your heart, then he knows he can get you because then he can lead and guide you the way he wants you to go. But in reality, we have God, we have the Holy Spirit, we have his word, and that brings the healing elements into our hearts. And so that gets us back connected the way we're supposed to be with the Lord, and, and it gets us back in faith again, like what Pastor Jeff was saying about using our words, and then Addison was saying, even if we don't feel like it, God will give us the will and the passion. In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we live by believing, or we, be, we live by faith and not by what we see or seen. Exactly. And so that's the thing is, um, you know, I was going to give an example out of the word. Did, did you pray about the offering? Why no. don't you pray for them and then, <laughs> then we'll... Okay, God, thank you that we can use the this seed as... Um, a point of reference and, and planting the seed in faith and hope that you're going to help us see people how you see them, um, that we trust you, God, for household breakthrough, yep. for kids' attitudes to turn around as we're thinking about that, and that you help them, Lord, to build up their um, spirit man, and that you just give parents wisdom on how to help all, the, all their kids. In Jesus' name. And thank you for this time, and I pray that everybody sees turnaround and breakthrough in their lives. In Jesus' right. name, amen. And, and like um, in 2 Corinthians 9, 8, 9, and 10, it says that he will literally give us seed for the sowing. And he supplies every need. And this might be an area of dis where you feel disheartened. You've been believing God for some financial breakthrough, and maybe it hasn't come yet, but it will come. So we, we're believing for that. We're believing with you for that. You get back in faith today. You keep trusting the Lord. The Lord is faithful to you as an individual. And so I would like to read this example about David because um, out of all that we're saying here, we have a ton of other scriptures, but we don't want to go too long. But, but really what we're saying is take back what the devil has stolen from you. So if he has stolen your encouragement, take it back and get encouraged today. And if, if uh, he's attacked you to the place that you feel embittered toward someone, take back the goodwill and you forgive them. And you overcome and you be the one that's the bigger one. And, and you uh, lose um, goodness on that other person and believe God that they'll understand where they were wrong. And, and if they never yield to the Lord, that's on them. But the Bible says, as much as it depends upon you, be at peace with all men. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit now uh, about uh, David in Ziklag. And a lot of you may know this story already, and so we, but we will explain it to you a little bit for those who don't know the story. But it's in 1 Samuel 30. And uh, 
Addison, you want to start reading? And we're just going to go over the story a little bit because David, this is a very famous story of how David was so discouraged during this time that, and he had no one to encourage him. And you may even feel that way today. And I think it's probably why we're talking along this line is I think there are some people that feel that way. But here's the wonderful thing is you can encourage yourself in the Lord. And that's what we're exhorting you on today. We're exhorting you on guarding your heart, letting your heart get healed before the Lord. Get back in faith. You've been in faith, get back in faith. And get over there again. Because this happened to David. And we admire David because he was a man after God's own heart. And this is an example of one of those times that he overcame. And I just read in Revelations this morning that uh, boy, we get to eat from the tree of paradise, I think it is, when we're overcomers. And it talks about the overcomers in Revelation. And God's really into us overcoming. Yes, he so is. we can overcome today, guys. David did in this yeah. chapter. So um, 1 Samuel 30, start with then, one. Then it, ha then it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day, and the Amalekites had made a raid on the Negev and on Ziklag and had overthrown Ziklag and burned it with fire. And they took captive the women and all who were in it, both small and great, without killing any anyone and carried them off and went their way. When David and his men came to the city, behold, it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with them lifted their voices and wept until there was no strength okay, on them to weep. Okay, see, that's that brokenheartedness. Look yeah. at that. They wept until there was no strength in them to weep. Oh my goodness. Yes. You want to start reading Hannah at uh, 5? Now David's two wives had been taken captive, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite. Moreover, David was greatly distressed. There it is again. Mm -hmm. It's another term for full of anxiety, full of depression, yep. so sorrows, sadness, mm -hmm. grief. Moreover, David was greatly distressed because the people had spoke of stoning him. See, there it is, speaking. Power of words, and mm -hmm. you can't unhear them. Yep. And it impacted him and created distress in his heart. For right. all the people were embittered, each one because of the, the, his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. But David, this was his response to the situation. Right. This was like an opportunity we see. Right. Some caved in and got bitter, murmured about it. Uh -huh. They started getting impulsive. They were talking about stoning their leader. Right. And that's really horrendous. And out, they blamed of, David. And for it was all out of it. control, blame mm -hmm. shifting. It mm -hmm. really wasn't David's fault. They were out actually doing God's will. The devil opportunistically tried to seize on him. Like he, he, that's that's what the enemy does. Yeah. But what the the believer does, it's provided here is, but David strengthen himself mm -hmm. in the Lord is God. Mm -hmm. It goes back to what we talked about with let the words, he said, let the words of my mouth right. and the meditation of my heart. And you can see then what he does after this. Right, because then his next step, and these are the things we're talking to you about. His next step is to inquire of the Lord what to do. So David always did this he, every time. He didn't let times go by. He would say, he would go and he would inquire of God, what should I do here, Lord? He showed his dependence on he him depended. and a relationship with him. Right. And, and so and it says in verse 7 that David said to Abiathar the priest, the son of Ahinelech, uh, please bring me the ephod. So Abiathar brought the ephod to David. And this underscores like having the right people in your life. Right. Abiathar was really also a really serious God follower. Yeah. And, um, you know, friendships really matter here, you know. And, and David is a leader here. These aren't his friends. These are his followers and his subjects that are turning on him. But he finds a person that his, is in his contemporary place, and he says, man, I, Abiathar, let's, let's bond together. And the ephod is a Hebrew thing that helped with discernment. So what it's saying is, hey, um, my priest friend, I'm going to somebody that's in a category where, where help comes from. Yeah. 
And I'm going to something that God has already provided that for some reason this is a way God gets information over to us, yeah. the ephod. Yeah. So this, uh, like what you're saying is he's saying, man, I need God on this situation. Right, right. And I need a godly friend. I don't, you know, it, I, need, I need somebody to get an agreement. So right. there's a lot on this. So, Addison, would you read verse 8? David inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I pursue this band? Shall I overtake them? And he said to him, Pursue, for you will surely overtake them, and you will surely rescue all. So here, God gives him a word of knowledge. You're going to do it. It's going to happen. Go for it. And so then it's interesting because they discovered an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David. And, and that Egyptian told them where they were and, and explained, you know, he, it gave them insight into what to do. So it, it said, um, um, then in 15, then David said to him, will you bring me down to this band? And he said, swear to me by God that you will not kill me or deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will bring you down to this band. So God gives him a word of knowledge. Then he get, God sends him a spy from the other camp. Yeah. And that spy That's on. a divine connection. It is a divine thing. God had a plan. He did. And because David was, he knew that he could trust God, God's busy giving him divine directives right so then these next uh, four verses who wants to read next because 16 17 and right in here it's not very many but that tells exactly what happened here and it's really cool I'll, i will when okay. he had brought him down behold they were spread o over all the land eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. David slaughtered them from the twilight until the evening of the next day, and not a man of them escaped except 400 young men who rode on camels and fled. So David recovered all. Well, that, let that stand out in your mind. I love that. So David recovered all that the Amalekites had taken. And we have a famous uh, chorus that we sing in church. I went to the enemy's camp, and I took back what he stole from me. Yeah. And that's what this verse here is saying. That, And he rescued his two wives. And nothing of theirs was missing, whether small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything that had been taken for themselves. David brought it all back. And that's what we're saying to you today. David was disheartened. He was discouraged. He could have quit. But he did. He pressed in. He pressed into God. So that's basically what we're telling you. Do you have anything to say on that, Addison? No. Nope. Well, you've had to do that, especially oh. <laughs> after having a second baby and, oh. and the pressures of, a, of having two little bitty ones under three. And then, I mean, you've had to really press into God. I know you have because... That goes with young motherhood. You're dealing with all these issues, hormonal swings, babies crying in the middle of the night, babies getting, uh, dealing with uh, maybe not feeling so well at times. And Oh, yeah. Well, something I've learned is that it's not going to be a perfect setup for you to spend time with God ever. So you just have to come up with the, <laughs> the <true>. times <laughs> and uh, right. spend time with God at all times throughout the day. Like, that's what prayer is. It's just talking to God. It's not like, I have to pray for one hour solid. It's like, it's just not going to happen right now. And maybe it happens sometimes. But if you are setting yourself up to be like, I have to do it at this time for this amount of time, it's then that becomes um, just... That's not pleasing to God because it's like I'm saying to Steve, I can only spend time with you when it's a perfect setup and or or else I just can't. Yeah. And it's it, it's really anytime you you try to right. like connect with the people you love and hey, just wanted to say I really love you and what's going on with your day? And that's how it is with God is throughout yeah. your day you connect even if it's like chaos is going on around you, fun chaos too. Right. Right. Um, you still you you take that moment to just connect with God and yeah. you just have to know that it's not going to it doesn't have to be a perfect time. If you are too tired right now in your life to get up extra early don't put that pressure on yourself if you have little kids and then you're not going to bed until late don't feel like i have to get up at 5 a.m every morning 
Um, and then you're exhausted all day long, and then you have a harder time handling stuff as it comes at you because you're tired. Right. I really don't feel like that's the season for you. Right. I'm saying this to myself, too. Because I right. before I had Evangeline, actually before I was pregnant with her, I was getting up really early, going on walks, praying, spending time with God, and then I got pregnant with her and was very nauseous, and I couldn't get up early. Mm -hmm. And so then I felt really bad because... It's funny how the devil condemns people. Yeah, I was, like, I was in such a good routine, and now I, I'm, I'm thrown off, and I, you know, I woke, woke up just feeling... All the girls can relate, feeling just so nauseous and couldn't even... Mm -hmm. Couldn't do it. So then I would have to find a different time of the day. It's not like... Yeah. So, yeah, pressing and... And that's what David did. He, he encouraged himself. He figured out a way. And then he, yeah. he, he grabbed the priest... Like he was telling about that and began to... The mic. <laughs> oh, you can't hear me. And he yeah. began to pursue God on the issue. So you're yeah. saying do it anytime. Acknowledge Press God in, in all your ways. Yeah. And so he I will direct about, your path. I think about the family that wanted to buy some adjoining property because of the bond of their family. And right. then the real estate agent gouged and hiked up the price. That's happened to me, actually. Mm -hmm. And it could cause you to back off and become bitter or hurt. Right. Feel disappointed. Because we've even had get some angry Christians toward, do that when whoa, we're buying we've, a We've had some here. manipulation. And that yeah. really can be unsettling. As you're trying to, you know, be fair and honest and honorable. And then, there, you know, that amounts to manipula manipulation and opportunism. Right. They're taking advantage of you. So what do you do? That couple... They had Abiathar bring the ephod, and they instead of getting bitter, they there was a strengthening moment where their mutual faith. Hey, just believe God. Don't worry about it. What did What did you tell the couple? Don't worry about the money that it will. God will provide the extra. The extra. So then, how it worked out in that scenario and you was that they sold their them. house yeah. really fast for more than I. Yeah. So is um thousands over asking price wow. and they said they would have been <laughs> they would have been happy with the asking price yeah. Isn't that great? and so it was became and it, a bidding war and, and then not only for... that they had a check come in unexpectedly well, that's right. uh, for also thousands uh, that they weren't expecting that they, came in from taxes and they didn't know it was coming so i think Isn't that because awesome? they didn't they turned their face to god and they didn't become bitter and angry at this person which mm -hmm. that was the setup from the devil That's so that the they would they then, wouldn't enjoy this blessing right. in this chapter you guys picked uh, of, of of ziklag where the 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 key moment was people got bitter they got they got to where they couldn't cry anymore they got depleted and that's where we that's have to watch out. Like this about. young mom, yeah. you get depleted when you haven't slept enough. Yes. Certain seasons in your life, you know, you go through through uh, menopause, or you go men. Mm -hmm. We go through our, uh, we go through things. Uh, Different are, pressures from work. Uh, yeah, or the societal out. This was a societal thing, that's and true. so then we go. Wait a minute. What has God really been? What has God laid down here that life and death is in the power of the tongue? So. I want to speak to my mountains, and I want to speak in faith. Mm -hmm. And I think of Hebrews 4, where they didn't enter in to the rest because they didn't mix what they heard with faith. Yeah. And that's really pretty specific. Yes. It's like we've got to stay, keep our faith orientation. Right. Like even Addison said, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith and not, not by us. sight or circumstance or how we feel or our five physical senses or even our emotions or our mood. And I realize, you know, these are, these are kind of really important kind of things we're laying out. They really do apply. They apply to the couple scrapping to try to sell and buy a house. It's, it, it applies to uh, us in our over 28 age bracket where we're now trying to provide leadership and in, mother, in this and new season. motherhood too. New motherhood. New fatherhood. You're single, newly single from a, from a, yeah. a death in your family. The, right. the, you know, you're looking at the diminishment of your savings because of the way the economy has gone. And you go, you know, Lord, transcendent above all these things, I'm going to strengthen or encourage myself right. in the Lord my God. And, well, who's a biothar and what's an ephod? Or how do I get in touch with Addison so she can encourage me? Well, no, it's, <laughs> it's what David said. He said, God, let the words of my mouth yes. and the meditation of, of my, my heart, heart become... Boy, I'm encouraged. I'm glad I came and, and crashed this party today. <laughs> yeah. You ladies yeah. really brought something today. This is important stuff. God's faithful. And we should end with that scripture, Philippians 4.19. 
my God shall, shall supply, supply all, of my my needs, all of my needs according, according to his riches in glory by, by Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. You had it actually right. Let's see it the way it actually is written. Okay. And, and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So take that to heart, guys, because that means every need he will supply and overcome heart sickness. Let your heart be healed today. Be blessed in the Lord. Get back in faith and know that he will come through for you because wow. he is faithful. Amen. And if you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, open up your heart right now and ask Jesus to come into your heart and be your Lord, be your Savior. And he will. And it will just transform your life, and you will not be sorry. He is wonderful. God bless you all. Yeah, Have a God great week. You. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.